Let's take a look at the intermolecular forces for Br2. This is diatomic bromine, also called molecular bromine, and it can be a gas or a liquid. So when we look at the intermolecular forces, the first question we ask is, are there ions present? Do we have a negative or a positive here? Since we don't, we can get rid of all of this. There are no ions present. Our next question is, do we have any polar molecules present? Well, polarity, we're looking at a difference in electronegativity between the atoms and the molecule. Since we have two bromine atoms, they're the same, there is no polarity. This is a nonpolar molecule. And because of that, we'll go over here. No, there are no polar molecules, and we go down. And for Br2, the intermolecular force present, London dispersion forces. So for London dispersion forces, we have these temporary dipoles that are induced between the bromine, the Br2 molecules. Note that bromine is a fairly large molecule, and because of that, the electrons are far from the nucleus, and we actually have stronger London dispersion forces than, say, something like fluorine or chlorine, which are in the same group as bromine on the periodic table. And that's the reason bromine can be a liquid at room temperature, because the London dispersion forces, they're fairly strong. They hold the molecules together, and you have a liquid. This is Dr. B with the intermolecular forces for Br2, diatomic bromine. Thanks for watching.